Bilal Powell, and you're watching Dan Sports News. You no, know, fair, you watch watching Dan Sports News. Oh. I'm Edwards, and you're watching Dan Sports News. This is Javon Cornelia, you're watching Dan Sports News. This is Jaden Gould, and you're listening to the Dan Sports News and Friends podcast. What's up, everybody? It's Clee Wap. You're listening to the Dan Sports News podcast. Now, I know you're from South Carolina, so tell me a little bit about growing up there. Growing up, uh, I moved around a lot in South Carolina. I was actually a military kid, so I moved to, like, seven different places. But I've been here most of my life, and um, it's, it's just very country. Like, you know, we got a lot of open fields, a lot of just land, and and everybody's family down here. Um, we're trying to get through the, the violent times. Um, of course, we have our instances, uh, but for the most part, it's a, it's a home feeling, you know? Now, South Carolina is really not known for rappers. Um, so what is it like growing up in there, in that area, and who were some of the rappers that you looked up to as a kid? In South Carolina, yeah, we don't have a lot of artists, um, but I looked up to, uh, it was an artist by the name of Speaker Knockers. Uh, he made beats and uh, rapped on his own beats. He was from South Carolina. Um, he died um, when he was like 19 years old. Um, and he's the one that made me like get into beats and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, you can make beats and rap to the same beats too? That's, that's amazing. So that's somebody I looked up to. That's the only person really from South Carolina. And I know you do producing as well. So what exactly is your title? You're a rapper, you're a producer. Tell me about all the things that you do. Uh, I was a producer first. I was a producer, rapper, songwriter, a graphic designer, um, and then just a youth leader, you know? All right. Now, growing up, were you saved? Um, did you grow up listening to Christian hip-hop? Um, and how did you get started in Christian hip-hop? Um, I wasn't saved. Uh, I didn't get saved until I turned 19 years old. Um, I went to this uh, Christian college. Um, so, of course, growing up, the only person I, I ever listened to um, was Lecrae. Um, I just thought that he was, that he was like, just real cool. Like, he didn't make it feel like it was corny. Like, I understood what he was saying, and he was still making it relatable to everybody. But, yeah. Yeah, so what would you say was the first Lecrae song that you remember listening to as a kid that really, you know, made you get interested in Christian rap? I would say the song After the Music Stops. Um, that was the first Lecrae song that I heard. Then I heard uh, Jesus Music with him and Trip Lee, and I was like, oh, man, it's kind of grimy. I like it, you know? Besides Christian hip-hop, who were some of the other rappers that you listened to growing up? Um, I listened to a lot of Nipsey Hussle growing up, which was kind of odd. I was like, I don't even know how I know who this dude is, but... He was good. Um, I listened to a lot of Kendrick Lamar growing up, I was, like uh, a boatload of Kendrick Lamar and a lot of uh, Childish Gambino. So I had like a chill kind of upbringing. Like I love listening to those artists. I remember actually the first time I heard of Nipsey Hussle was actually during the Lecrae song, I'm Turnt, you know, where he says, deuces yeah. up to Nipsey, K-Dot, and Game. You know, that's when I first heard about Nipsey Hussle and then I started hearing his music later on the past few years, but that's really, it was a Christian artist who actually introduced me, you know, to hearing Nipsey Hussle. So how old were you when you first started rapping? Oh, um, when I first, like, tried to rap, I was, like, 16 years old, and it didn't work, so I gave up. But I didn't start, like, officially rapping until I turned 19 when I got saved. Yeah, God kind of opened up the door. Like, once I gave my life to him, like, all of these other gifts just started to drop in. I was like, oh. I can actually make more than two words rhyme right now. Like, it, it was amazing. We saw you release the new video, Tippy Top. Tell me a little bit about that video. How did that come about? We we originally made the song, Me, uh, Big Breeze, Elder Wine. That was our first time ever meeting in person. Really? Was to shoot the music video. So it was like, the whole time I'm driving up uh, to Atlanta, I'm like, it could be real weird. Like, we don't know each other. Like, it might not work. But, um, like, just the whole prowess of the song is uh, coming from, like, a very dark and low state. And the tippy top is the ultimate goal, making it to heaven. So uh, I was like, everybody, just just uh, tell your perspective on where you came from and where you feel like God is leading you. I'll make the beat, and I'll do the hook, and you guys do the rest. So what was it like working with those guys? Like you just said, you didn't know them. 
So how was it first meeting them and then working with them? Um, meet, meeting them, it was, it was fun. You know, I, I moved around a lot as a kid, so I had to get used to making new friends everywhere that I went. Um, Big Breeze, he's like the uncle of the family. You know, he's real funny, real laid back. LD is like the super, the super smart techie uh, cousin that you have. You know, like it was just genuine. Like, we all felt the spirit of God inside of each other. I was like, yeah, like, this will work. Do you have any more music videos in the works? Yeah. Um, no, uh, oh, snap. September 18th, I'll actually be dropping another song with Big Breeze and uh, TJ Godfrey. Um, that'll have a video with it as well. Then we're going to do an EP um, to drop, like, maybe two days later afterwards. Now, of course, we know you did Stick, which was a Reach Records record. Um, Rockstar JT, Duke Deuce. Tell me about that song. How did that come about? Um, I was actually just in my room like this, just chilling. I was making some beats. Then I got like a group FaceTime call. I'm not used to iPhones. So it popped up as a message. I was like, I don't know how to answer it. So I ignored it the first time. And then um, they called back again. Both numbers I didn't know. Um, Rock, it was Rockstar and Holby. And, um, I was like, oh, man, like, what's up? How did I get my number? Like, how y'all doing? It was like, man, we need you to do a hook. It was just supposed to be for a, um, supposed to be for a, just a regular song that they wanted to do at first. Um, after Hobie gave me an idea of what to talk about, I did the hook that night, and they sent it back that same night. And Hobie was like, you know what? I'm going to let you guys have the song. So my original meaning for a uh, stick was referencing, um, uh, the Madden hit stick. So whenever I say like Ray Lewis with the hit stick, like I was like, man, like that was my favorite game growing up. Um, and I just felt like that beat gave that energy. Like it hits every time. Um, but then of course people took it and ran with it. But it was a, it's a really dope opportunity. Um, you know, I got feedback from Craig. He was like, oh, this is crazy. I was like, man, you know, I grew up listening to you. Exactly. Yeah, Lecrae is Jay-Z to us in Christian hip hop. So what was it like working with Duke Deuce? You know, he's a secular rapper. How was that working with him? Um, We never actually got to like talk a lot, um, but he's actually like one of my favorite artists out now, just because of the energy that he brings. Uh, he's from Memphis, so, uh, you know, he, he just is, is very lively. Um, And he respected that we, we weren't cursing in our songs, stuff like that. Like he, he delivered a solid verse where he just talked about his life in, in Memphis. I was like, man, it's it's dope um, to see that we can build that bridge, you know? I always think that it's great when you guys mix with the secular artists, and as long as they keep it, you know, clean, don't do any of the stuff that they're doing, if they keep it clean, you know, a good message, that's what is needed to keep spreading the gospel. That's, um, that's like one of the main goals, like, for, for us as Christians, is that you wanna you wanna like get outside of the four walls and bring people in, and it's like if they see that we're not scared to, you know, eat with everybody else, and mm -hmm. it just brings unity. And that's all it's really about. Now, like we said, that was a Reach Records song. Is there anything in the works with Reach Records? Um, anything about that? Um, not that I can talk about, but I'm definitely you know every time I'm in Atlanta, I'm stopping by, and um, they treat me like family. Um. And it's odd. I was like, man, you know, I listen to these guys and then like to see them in person. I'm like, all right, I'm like, this is cool. So I'm just building uh, more relationships all across the board. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely got some stuff cooking up. Tell me about the first time meeting Lecrae. What was that like? So I, I actually haven't met him in person yet. Like every time that I go to reach, he's not there. Um, but he, uh, he's just a genuine dude. Like he doesn't, he doesn't take how high of his platform and like project that on the people in the way that he presents himself. Like he's just a very humble guy. Um, a, a likable guy and, and somebody I got respect for. Like I know when I meet him in person, yeah, he's going to be like six, eight or however tall he is compared to me, but it'll be, it'll be dope. What is it like just knowing that your song, that your name is on a reach record song? Oh uh, man. I wouldn't say a dream come true. It's more so like 
I didn't believe it until like the project actually dropped and like Reach was reposting my stuff. I was like, oh man, like this is really happening. Cause I just started doing Christian rap like going on two years ago. I'm like, I'm giving everything to God and he's like expediting the process and just letting him be that catalyst in this, in this journey. And it's like, look where I brought you, but this isn't it. Now you said you're also a youth leader in your church. So what is that like? Um, having the kids, do they listen to your music? Do they always talk to you and see you as this now famous superstar? How is that in the church? No, they still they still see me as um as Scooty. You know, I always I always make it a point to just remain humble. Like I'll never bring up the song. They just so happen to play it, so they'll play it at church, and I'm like, oh, like this is you. And it's a it's a really cool um like doorway to talk to kids, um because you know kids that have like a like a defense system up, right? Like before you try to minister to them. Oh no! Like da 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 da. Then somebody walks up. Do you know who that is? I'm like, yeah, I'm your youth leader. It's like, no, you make music. And then it just opens up this huge conversation. Um, but yeah, the kids love it. They're eating it up. Those are like my main support system. I send all of the kids the music, and just let them do what they do. Do you have any other songs in the works? I know you talked about that one with TJ coming out soon. But is there any other records in the works? Um, I have a record um with a girl named Jekka Soul. Um, she dropped a song this year named Separation Anxiety and it it went crazy. Um and we have like a like a Christian R and B song coming out. We don't have a set date on it, but um it should be before the year is over. And then uh working on some just rave music, like just to play at a party or the youth retreat. It's coming though. Yeah, I actually interviewed Jekka Soul a few months ago. She's a really great artist. Yeah, I can't wait for that song to release. Yeah, like, I am I was, like, on the edge of my seat. We had to push it back. I was actually supposed to come out um, on the 21st last week, but some stuff fell through, and um, me and her have been working together for, like, a year now, so I was like, well, whatever we got to do to keep this song alive and still drop it, I'll do whatever it takes. It's an amazing song, though. Now, who are some artists that you would like to work with in the future? Oh, um, I would say I would want to work with Aha Gazelle. If I could work with Gavi, that would be really nice. That's one person that I that I think is like one of my favorites to listen to, but I don't tell everybody that. It's just like in my own time. Then of course one K few, like he's just yeah, he's, he's going crazy really right now. Yeah, he's going crazy. Yeah. So I know you have the reference to Madden, like you said, in Stick. Who's your favorite football team? I'm actually a, a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Really? Yeah, a lot of Eagles. Yep. What do you think the Eagles are going to do this year? I'm praying that they can they can win another Super Bowl. Um, I think it's pretty cool that I got to see the Eagles win their suit their like their first Super Bowl in franchise history in my timeline. I was like, man, this is great. Like I'll never forget that year. That was the year that I got saved. Really? Yep. Wow. That was the year I got saved. Hopefully, I make it to the Super Bowl. If not. At least I can make it past the wild card game. I'll be fine with that. Yeah, there's lots of believers actually on the Eagles. You got to get them to listen to your music. Yeah, for real. Like I tried to promote a song, um, tried to send a song to them, but quarantine hit and some stuff fell. But I was like, man, I would love to just let them run out in one song. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know in the NBA there's guys like Steph Curry, Justin Jackson, who are really cool with some of the Christian hip-hop um, artists. Have you ever reached out to them, or have you trying to get your music out to some of those guys? Um, Eventually, yeah. Right now, I'm, like, working with a bunch of, like, different college players, um, some at Ohio State, um, some at Oklahoma, um, that just found me through, mute, like, through Instagram. I was like, oh, you make dope music. What? How did you find it? Like, but they did. If I can get, if I can get a song to... Uh, Who's my favorite player right now? I would say NBA player. If I can get LeBron to just go on Instagram and do what he does on his story, the one song, that'd be great. I know Bizzle has actually been in, a, well, Steph Curry has been in a Bizzle video too, so that's another connection. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was a few years back. I think when the Warriors won their first championship, Steph's in the Bizzle video. Oh, I should hit up Bizzle then. I'm like, hey, man. Yeah, get a feature right, from man. Bizzle. 2K, NBA 2K, they're very receptive, I noticed, to the Christian hip-hop rappers and artists. Lots of you guys' um, songs are in 2K. I think uh, Stick is a great song that should be in 2K. 
how cool would that be to see Stick in 2K in the next 2K? Oh, man, that... Now, that really be crazy, because I love playing 2K. Of course, I'm an Xbox guy, and I get a lot of slack for that, but it's okay. Um, just to, just to, like, open up the, the game menu and hearing it, yeah, 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 I'm like, yeah, that's it. Oh, it's amazing. Who's your team in 2K? Um, oddly enough, I like to use... I like to use the Timberwolves, which is kind of, I use the Timberwolves, I use the Nuggets. Um, my all-time favorite would have to be the Clippers from NBA 2K12. Blake Griffin, Chris Paul. They were Paul. really nice. Yeah. Nice. JJ Reddick, Jamal Crawford, DeAndre, I was like, man, they had a really good team. So who's going to win the NBA Finals this season? I'm a LeBron fan, so I'm going to have to go with the Lakers. I got to. That's my guy. Yeah, I'm a Lakers fan, so I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Now, as you know, um, rappers want to be athletes, and athletes want to be rappers. You're a rapper. What are your thoughts on the NBA players who like to rap? Like Dame Dalla, you know, Marvin Bagley, Lonzo Ball. What are your thoughts on the athletes who like to rap? Um, I think it's dope. Uh, one person that shouldn't rap, is Aaron Gordon. Like he's got he got to just give it up. I think my favorite NBA rapper is actually uh, Lou Williams. Really? Wow. I was like, man, he's like he's been he's got songs with Meek Mill and Lowe's. Like, bro, like he's tough. Oh. If you could get a feature from one NBA player, NBA rapper, uh, who would it be? Um, you know, it's weird. He isn't a current NBA player, but he's a legend. I would get Shaq on a song. Yeah, Shepard did one with Shaq. Yeah, he did a Game Time remix. Yeah. I was like, man, Shaq is, I know exactly what songs that he likes, so I'm like, I could put together something crazy with Shaq and just let him DJ it and crowd surf, like, perfect combo. But right now, Damian Lillard, like, he's going crazy in, um, in terms of rapping. I think he would be someone mm. who would be dope to have on a song, too. Oh, definitely. Like, I feel like if I can get a song with him or him and, him and um, uh, uh, J.I.D. did a song together, I think that would be really nice. Because um, they, they got, like, a conscientious uh, rap style. Like, they, they make you really think about your life and you get into theirs. So I think that would be dope. When you're not making music, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I like to watch... I like to watch uh, Corey Kenshin on YouTube. Um, I think he's a really dope YouTuber. Like, he's super wholesome, down to earth. I like to just get in my car and drive. One time I drove, I just started driving. I ended up in Florida one of those nights, and I like to go to the beach. Who would you say is an underrated rapper right now in CHH that we need to be on the lookout for? Ooh, mm. I feel like everybody I would say is, like, out there. Mm, man, that's a, that's a really good question. <laughs> there's, a, there's a guy that I know that actually uh, was a student in my church. Uh, his name is um, Official BDT. He's actually like, he's really cool. He's really smooth. Um, he's like he's like a Christian knob. He's just really smooth in his deliveries. Just a very stylish dude. Like, he makes everything from scratch. Like, this dude is amazing. And one thing I wanted to ask you, Scooty Wop, your name, um, why did you choose that name? <laughs> um, so originally I used to go by Lil Sco, and I went to go look it up one day, like after dropping the project, and it was like six other Lil Skulls. I was like, man, how are they going to find my page? And there's all these other people that pop up first. So um, my, my older brother used to call me Scooter um, back when I was younger. Um, and then he was like, you know what? Like, just change it. Just go by Scooty. I was like, oh, okay. And then I was like, but that's kind of just boring, like just Scooty. I said, um, but then I added the walk part because I listened to a lot of like Gucci Man, um, and that was always like his favorite ad lib. He was just screaming randomly in the in the back of songs, like songs about the end. Well, I was like, oh, no point, but it it works. And I was like, I put it together, and it's just something that's super super different. Like I know you won't find another Scooty Walk out there. If there is send them my way so I can find something out. Yeah, and my final question, who are some artists that you would like to work with in the future? Weirdly enough, if I could work with Post Malone and Isaiah Rashad. Post Malone's vocals are amazing. Then Isaiah Rashad, he just, he comes with a super smooth vibe. Like, he's always, is talking about chilling. I would love to work with them. Tyler Creator too, just for a music video. If he can shoot, if he can direct the video for me, 
Yeah, that'd be dope. Let all the listeners know where they can follow you on social media and check out your music. Um, you can find me on Instagram at ScootyWop2X, uh, Facebook at ScootyWop2X, Twitter at ScootyWop2X, all platforms, Scooty Space Wop, W-O-P, um, and you can find me probably in your city service.